There's something we need to talk about. Okay. There's something very important that we need to discuss about this podcast. About the podcast? Yeah. About how amazing it is? I know. Roses, it is time for us to stop oh bringing up King's Quest V every episode. <laughs> No, I can't. <laughs> Every single episode, either me or you talk about the Yeti, the pie, sorry. the mutton chop. No, it's me too. <laughs> it's not just you. The mutton chop, the cat, the stick, the boot. The people listening who have never played King's Quest now have a full walkthrough <laughs> memorized. But I didn't even explain how to get to the bandits camp yet. I I can't stop talking about King's Quest V. It's my favorite. Okay, how about this? We can talk about King's Quest V. Somebody call us out. How dare you? <laughs> we we can keep talking about King's Quest V, but we have to retire. And we can say a fond farewell to them right now. Like, we can okay. eulogize them if we want. Okay. We have to say a fond farewell to the boot, cat, stick, <laughs> mouse basement puzzle. It okay. cannot be our frame of reference for everything ever. <laughs> Okay, well. Okay. Good goodbye. Boot we love you, dear friend. Cat rat. Yeah. <laughs> you are the worst puzzle that's ever been made, and we loved you so much for it. <laughs> and now, okay, now we have to say goodbye to the <laughs> cheese in the machine puzzle. No, I can't. I can't let it go. <laughs> no, I can't let it go. Okay, okay. I love that puzzle. Okay. Man, I have a problem. <laughs> can we say, can we, can we say goodbye to the, y- throw the y- pie in the Yeti's face puzzle? Yes. Okay. Yes, we can say goodbye. You, you know what, Yeti puzzle? It's been a good run. I didn't think you were as hard as other people did. And I will miss you dearly. In memoriam, amen. <laughs> we love you, King's Quest. Well, <laughs> we feel ways about you, well, King's Quest Roses V. Well, Roses loves you, King's Quest. <laughs> we both have feelings about you, King's Quest V. And, you know, we'll return to you like a dear friend one day. But from now on, <laughs> th- the secret objective of this podcast, when we look at, like, our task list on the upper, in the upper left-hand corner of our screen, secret task is do not mention King's Quest V. <laughs> I'm going to try so hard, we're but no try, guarantees. We're going to try so, so hard. <laughs> in in memoriam hey everyone pushing up roses here welcome back to save your game with me as always the sparkling <laughs> the <laughs> i i got nothing the best Whoa. boy the t- no it's not that it's just that i have to redo my adjectives like every week i don't want to use the same one you know i've used enigmatic effervescence all the e ones you know energetic we can't i have to retire the e ones and go to something else i like sparkling because it makes me sparkling feel like a boy i feel like a twilight vampire that's when exactly I, what I was thinking. And it's true, too. Like, you've you've now met me in person. Yeah. We finally kind met in person. Kind of vampiric, really. Yeah. When you see me, I do literally <laughs> shimmer in the sunshine. You have, like, the clearest skin I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. What is going on? <laughs> okay, I'll tell you. Okay, uh, the secret to... My skin is never moisturize it, take Great. too hot of showers, drink Good. too much, eat too much <laughs> sugar. That is not fair. And have pizza every day. <laughs> Good. Great. And then you Solved. get skin as nice as mine. I'm kind of I'm kind of sad I missed the long haired Matt era. Mm. That era is is now gone and past us. Yeah, and you know, and I'm sorry, I know I was like a little I mean, I was still really, really strong, but I was a little less strong. It's kind of like Samson. When you cut my hair, <laughs> some of my strength goes away. 
That's okay. That's that's forgiven. You were pretty strong. We didn't test the jumping. I'm a little upset I didn't test the jumping. Well, we were mostly indoors, and except for that's and then true. when we were outside, everyone was uh, marveling over my sparkling skin that shimmered in the sunshine like yeah, it was covered just the in glitter. shimmer is like gold. He shimmers like gold, and, that's and Matt. uh. <laughs> And just so you so you guys know, pushing up roses is eleven feet tall. <laughs> that is something I learned, and and she'll That's never tell learned, that. Yeah. She'll never be honest about that on the podcast or on no, the internet. No, I'm very, but... you know, I'm I'm very very uh, self conscious about my eleven foot tall. <laughs> Being everybody always thinks I'm short, and that's the truth. Everyone always thinks I'm short, but I'm not. I'm actually, I would say, pretty tall. Taller yep. than me. Am I tall? No. Am I, I taller than you? I think so. I well, okay, hold on. I think height you were just intimidated. Height, that's height all that check. was. Height check. <laughs> Who are you saying that to? I'm five. <laughs> no. I'm five eight. I am almost five eight. Almost. Oh. You know what put it over? My boots. My boots put it over. I, I was bet. just going to say, you were probably wearing boots, and I was probably wearing canvas sneakers. So yeah. you probably were That's a right. little. You were taller than me. Yeah. But or yeah, you just ate. felt that way because I was so magnificent in person <laughs> yes. that you were like, oh my god, she's so tall. Yeah. That's also probably true. That's um, probably what happened. I understand. I'm very intimidating. How are you? How's how's your week been? How 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 is how is life? It's good. Uh I played some games yesterday. Oh hell yeah. I I got my hair fixed today. So Very cool. I have good hair and good games, which is a good combination to have. It's all good. There's I think one of the games that you've been playing, I've also been playing. So I wonder if we should sequester that into a segment. There's Okay, mm -hmm. what have you been playing? I have been playing and finished uh, Duck Detective, The Secret Salami. Yeah, so why, don't we, finished. why don't we sequester that into a segment? Why don't we, because we, sure. we are going to talk today, uh, dear listener, about Harvester. That's what this episode's going to be about. Yay! I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> about you know the what? 1996 exploitation <laughs> uh, yeah. schlock FMV game Harvester. Um, yep. But why don't we do a short segment about Duck Detective in between? Yeah. I yeah, would anyway. love to. And and then the other game that I've been yes. playing for this podcast, but also for myself as well. Mm -hmm. I, I think we are going to cover it, but I, I booted it up because I was I have a genuine interest, is An English Haunting. Oh, my and God. Yes. I don't know how far I am in it. I'm, I'm in this, this, this feeling, this emotion of I want this to ramp up quickly like as soon as it can because right now I feel like I'm not doing much and that's not to say I don't like it it's uh it's got this we already we talked about this in our in our demos episode it looks beautiful yeah it sounds beautiful yeah um you know it takes place in early 1900s and the music and the settings that they, they match that they match that time in London mm -hmm. uh, so everything looks really nice I found the puzzles that I've done so far pretty great um i'm not overly struggling uh with anything but i need it to ramp up matt <laughs> like, I mean, oh yeah I you're need something it's... to happen why don't you give me just like a hint as to how far in your you are like what? i have not gotten my lantern working so i've not been in that basement in in the in the house yet where the shoe shine boy is do you know what i'm okay. talking the, the, yeah. yes so all i'm right, not right. that's that's yeah so that's the place i'm supposed to go I love the premise, by the way. I think the premise is great. I, I, and again, I know we spoke about it in our demos thing, but just to, for the listeners real quick, we're playing a character that is kind of one of the heads of a metaphysics department. Mm -hmm. And our partner has gotten himself into some trouble. Uh, he seems to have taken a donation to the school. to the to A, a donation was made to our department, but our partner another professor took it uh, Ab allegedly ab allegedly absconded with it yeah yeah uh, withdrew yeah, it from allegedly. the bank and yeah. ran away yeah and now he's nowhere and so mm -hmm. some of the other higher ups at this university we teach at they're like you know what you have we're going to we're going to shut this department down unless in 72 hours you can <laughs> prove that ghosts exist i'm like well that's impossible <laughs> but i'm going to do my best 
our character says as much too is like uh this is yeah. impossible <laughs> yeah this is this is an impossible time frame I really do I really do enjoy that premise. There's a lot of things I am just loving about this game. I, I think where I'm getting a little a little not, not I'm not stuck. I'm just like waiting is I rem, I'm kind of I'm kind of comparing this to Gabriel Knight. Right. In a sense that there's something supernatural that could possibly occur. Right now we're very grounded. Uh, we have a map that we it, it is very similar the way you You're travel bouncing around a city yeah bouncing yeah bouncing around a big city talking and the settings are kind of similarly structured but the Agreed. difference is gabriel knight went hard right away and then i kind of did it did it go hard right away i'm actually trying to remember the beginning of gabriel knight you have a you wake up from a nightmare yeah right? you wake up from that intense so it does go kind of hard right away you're already having kind of these supernatural haunting dreams with haunting imagery. But then you do spend a long time investigating a murder and voodoo without really under like without really seeing any action or anything super interesting right. happening. And but I don't I don't think it's the lack of action. I think it's the way the story was told. I always okay. felt a little bit tense with with Gabriel Knight. And then I and then I kind of thought about uh, the last door and kind of made a comparison there sure that game goes hard immediately yes. you are in it immediately and i think maybe i was craving that because now i'm kind of i'm still in this casual mode i'm getting to know my settings i've unlocked a ton of settings which is very satisfying by the way right uh, love unlocking new settings just like in gabriel knight but i feel that i, I and i feel like i'm almost there but I, I needed to ramp up because right now it's not. And another thing I, I feel like, I don't know if I have to warn the viewer about this, but because it is time accurate, like year accurate, uh, so are the way people talk. Um, and thus in London at this time, there will be sex workers. They will be called prostitutes. Uh, men will refer to them as whores. And it, I don't know how I feel about that. How do you feel about that? How do you feel about using language accurate stuff for that kind of stuff? Um, you know, I, I, I think it becomes more dicey when you get into race or sure. um, sexuality, um, even nationality. I think when you're talking about, um, I, I think when you're talking about a profession, I think it is. Uh, it's hard, right? <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's yeah, right. Yeah, it's changed its uh, function and public perception so many times in history, yeah. and and it's always been prevalent in every part of history. So I I, yeah. I just don't see how we get a, around it, and I don't think people being super woke about sex workers would. I, I think that would feel very weird. <laughs> sure. And it would be different if they were pulling a King's Quest. If if right. these if the sex workers were damsels, if they were in distress, if it went into let's be honest, you know, police quest, white power man fantasy. Yeah. Then I, I think it would be different, but the characters themselves are smart and savvy and that's, perfectly fine. They're not portrayed in a negative light. That's what I was just going to say. And the people yeah. who speak ill of them are portrayed in a negative light. Yes, they're they're the terrible. The people who yeah, the people who are the worst to the sex workers are all bad people and our character doesn't seem thrilled <laughs> to be spending right. time with them but isn't really feel it doesn't the judgment isn't vocalized and isn't Correct. um it, and it's nobody's judgments of them is, are rewarded. So yeah. From that angle, I think I feel okay about it, but I can see how if you, um, I can see how if you identify as female or if you have any sort of connection to sex work, it might bristle up against you know. For sure. Your, yeah. Uh, yeah, and like I said, I, I can kind yeah. of yeah, I can kind of accept it because of the tone, because of the right. context. But I'm always a little on edge about that kind of stuff, you know. Sure. Um, just from previous games and how they, they've handled that kind of thing and just being in the gaming space, just in, in general. Uh, so I'm always, I guess, I, I don't know if wary is the right word, but I'm always alert, making right. sure that it's it, it, the context makes sense. Um, 
And so I think I, I am okay with that. And I'm just, I'm just dying for something to happen. I think, um, I just, I didn't quite get there. I think I spent maybe an hour and a half on it. Um, okay. I think just kind you're of looking on... around and talking. I think you're on the cusp. It is, it is sort of a quiet game. Um, yeah. It does ramp up a bit, but you are going to experience some lulls. And, I mean, you did in Gabriel Knight as well, but I, I see what you mean. Like, playing Gabriel Knight, you felt the tension the entire time. Yeah. I think I did feel that in this game. So maybe me oh, and you are having just slightly different experiences um, yeah. with how we're, re like, personally reacting to it. Uh, but <laughs> definitely uh, you were on the cusp of weird things happening and some funny yeah, things happening so it's it has some humor to it i'll give it that mm -hmm. i i i liked some of the the quick cuts and and some of the humor i will say this i realized this is the funniest thing ever and also <laughs> annoying why can't us as adventure gamers why can't we get a matchbook that doesn't fall into a puddle why why <laughs> why why, why? The game knows what it was doing. It no devs, yeah. you knew what you were doing. You did it on purpose because you know that there's no such thing as a dry matchbook in an adventure game. I mean, absolutely uh, so, they did, yeah. Absolutely. Even the character's happens. like, oh, so sorry. So cl I'm just so clumsy. I just don't. <laughs> immediately, yeah. <laughs> just immediately. I'm like, really? Yeah. Like, you're kidding me, right? And then so, um, so I realized I couldn't. Go ahead. Another game we'll be talking about today, you do get a dry match book. Oh, okay. Oh, you mean Harvester? Yeah, yes. Well, they're not all, obviously, they're not all wet. Yeah, but no, I know. <laughs> I just still, I still could not believe that. Yeah. And uh, because of that, I went to the house, which is arguably going to be a, a, a tense or frightening moment. And I went into this basement and it was dark, right? As it is mm. in adventure games. If you don't have a lantern, you don't have a light source, it's going to be dark. Right. And so. I got there with my wet match and my lantern. I'm like, oh, I'm not ready for this. But the music was absolutely horrifying to me. And I like, it was so scary. I jetted out of the basement so quickly because I knew I couldn't light my lantern. And the music was terrifying me. I'm like, oh, no, nope, nope, <laughs> nope, nope, yeah. ghosts. And I'm, I'm a person that believes in ghosts and is afraid of them. <laughs> okay. So great. <laughs> Perfect. <Yeah. laughs> In English Haunting, so Postmodern Adventures so far has done two games. Nightmare Frames, which was also a yeah. period piece set in, like, exploitation Hollywood. Um, oh, fun. You play, like, a horror writer in exploitation. Oh, is it, like, very Stephen King? I don't know. I You know, I haven't read much Stephen King, but you play an exploitation-era horror writer who is out of work and then, I guess, kind of stumbles upon a real... Um, like de satanic cult in in Hollywood. Fun times. Um, and in this one, you play yeah this metaphysics professor <laughs> in London who is having to deal with like the spiritism movement. And I mean, what I like about both these games is just like how crazily well researched they are. Um, I think that's why I was kind of like, oh, it's a little bit Gabriel Knight esque because there's clearly research into yeah. the, the time and the the subject matter too there's even so there's a lot of like uh gothic horror elements to mm -hmm. this to an english haunting <laughs> there which you know gothic horror was a little bit slow but you do go into an early you know 1900s horror bookstore at one point and mm -hmm. all it is like, there's no point in it, and the character even remarks there's no reason he should be in there. And all it is <laughs> is just references and it, uh, jokes nice. about early 1900s and late 1800s horror novels. Uh, and it's very, very cool. Um, That's awesome. But anyway, yeah, so you are tentatively enjoying it, but you are worried that it's going to lose your interest. Yeah, and and part of that is in my own head. Like I just I can't be comparing it to Gabriel Knight. You know, I have to make <laughs> right. sure that it's its own or the Last Door, which was very, which very much like I I had a great reaction to. I loved the Last Door, so I'm trying to like keep it in, as its own identity. If it's a little slower, if it's a little more subdued, then it is. And I'm mm -hmm. you know I'm still very much enjoying it because man, it is. 
it's an adventure game like through yeah. and through it's very um very just point to standard point and click format which i like i i that's the kind of game i want to play so yeah i'm i'm curious i'm going i'm probably gonna play more of it maybe tonight or tomorrow and see what happens i think it's what a seven hour six hour seven hour game maybe i i don't know how long it is i have not beaten it yet i am 2.6 hours into it and i feel like i'm coming across like a midway point um, okay but i don't know who knows it, it could go much longer yeah i am 87 minutes in Okay. So that's where we're at. But yeah, I would love to talk about the other game that we played and finished, uh, which is The Duck Detective. <laughs> yeah, I think we should, let's let's do that in another segment. Also, I do want to say to the, um, yes, because they've asked us this before, to let us, let them know when we are going to go a little deeper into games so that they can okay. catch up before the episode comes out. And we never do because we kind of... <laughs> We plan all our episodes, <laughs> but we shuffle them around a lot, and we uh, a lot of times we'll make a decision about yeah. what our next episode is going to be in between <laughs> recordings. That's true. Yeah, because, you know, life. So next episode, we will be talking about An English Haunting and Nightmare Frames. So if yes. you guys want to catch up and play those games or play a little bit of those games, um, then you can follow along in our discussion next week. Definitely. Um, Good job, Matt. <laughs> Thank we, you. I remember to do something. <laughs> uh, We're doing great. So before we talk about Duck Detective, mm -hmm. I have been playing one other game that I want to talk about real quickly. Um, and I think I have to talk about it quickly because I don't really know what's going on. <laughs> oh, boy. Well, what? That's, what? <laughs> that is Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. That's an interesting name. Mm -hmm. It's a black and it's a mostly black and white game. It's tank controls, and you almost feel a little bit like you're in a modern version of like one of those old, like Silent Hill or Resident Evil or something. Okay, but mm -hmm. it's but there's no combat. It is a puzzle game. Okay, you are like so like a, so logic puzzles. Yeah, you are summoned to this mansion or this this hotel. I guess it is. And I, I can't really figure out why we're there. I can't figure out what we're supposed to be doing. There has been at least one murder. Uh, okay. There's been at least one ghost. <laughs> um, <laughs> at least one. Yeah, I can't tell if there's been more <laughs> than one. Um, and, it, you know, it's basically just like there are puzzles scattered all over this place. Most of them involve coming up with the right numbers f or combinations mm. for locks. And putting together uh, yeah like logic puzzles that you find scattered about the hotel mm -hmm. and then matching them with the correct say door or container sounds like the seventh guest i think it's a little more mist like yeah because none of the puzzles have mini games associated with them okay it's not like you dip into like uh, you know, like a that box game where you have to make more boxes than the other guy or like <laughs> yeah. or like you're trying to uh you know flip all the switches and they turn another switch every time you so like it's there's none of that yeah. stuff it's yeah. all just like you're getting these really esoteric clues mm -hmm. um and then having to sit down and <laughs> like think really hard about shapes and patterns and math and uh words it's uh. <laughs> yeah i don't think uh. you would i don't think you would love it but for people no. who really like um smashing their head against puzzles <laughs> uh all right you know I, I the other thing i would compare it to is like the professor layton games okay um, okay where yeah, they're all just kind of logic, logic puzzles that you don't do in the game. You do on a piece of paper and then input your answer into the game. Yeah. Anyway, that's Lorelei and the Laser Eyes. It's weird. I don't know if I love it, but I know that it's got <laughs> a lot of puzzles that have been keeping me entertained. Well, that's good. I mean, maybe it's one of those things where once you're fully done with the journey, with the game, you'll be like, yeah, I liked it. <sighs> you know... <sighs> I started it and I was like, this is going to be so hard. All of this yeah. is so like, I am so confused about anything. And then I found that actually a lot of the puzzles um, are easier. 
than I expected. Like, oh, that's uh, good. That's always nice. I thought to myself, like, what if I just try the easy solution on this puzzle and it'll be mm-hmm. wrong and then I'll move on? And it worked. And I was like, oh, okay. So I think I just figured out what the solutions to like seven different puzzles were because they're oh, nice. the thing that's right in front of them. And I hadn't yeah. even, I thought that it was going to be more complex than that. Um, the game also tells you exactly how much of it you've completed, and I think I'm like 38% of the way in. So maybe oh, it gets harder and harder, but yeah. my my experience so far was, oh my god, this is going to be the hardest game I've ever played. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> like, like Mist. Like, I find Mist very, very difficult, so... Right, and it's similar to Mist, where it's like, oh, actually, this is a little easier than I expected. Uh, I, I think I was letting myself, in both cases, get intimidated by the game... And then yeah. when I actually just started trying things, it was kind of like, oh, uh, okay, that's all it, that's all it was. Like these aren't that doesn't make these puzzles easy, but it makes them yeah. achievable. Um, yeah, uh, I find the graphics a little off-putting, even though yeah. these are my co- these are my colors, man. Like the, <laughs> normally, normally right. I'd be all all upon that, but it, it looks almost a little irritating i'll say that yeah it's it's uh, again it almost feels like smoothed out versions of resident evil or silent hill or something um there's odd camera angles there's tank controls and there's a sequence at one point where you go into a computer to play a virtual version of lorelei and the laser eyes (laughs) and it is Super pixelated 3D models. It looks exactly uh-huh. like Resident Evil. So, oh, nice. So clearly, that's where it's taking its, uh, uh you know, visual yeah. cues from. Oh yeah, especially if, with yeah. the tank controls, or even even maybe Alone in the Dark or something. It's yeah, it's a weird game. It's weird. I don't think I do not think it's for everybody. Yeah, I mean, I can tell just by listening to your description. Like, nah, I'm not gonna <laughs> yeah. play that. <laughs> Um, all right. Do you want to do a quick swanks maximums and talk about swanks max? <laughs> swanks max. <laughs> That's my favorite yeah. department store. <laughs> And you can lead us in as the, when you're done with your joke. You know, now I'm afraid that this joke isn't so because listeners don't know that we just spent like 10 minutes working on technical issues. <laughs> Guys, and, listen. <laughs> and at the beginning of those technical issues, you were telling me about how you uh, you liked your idea for Nightmare Frames better. Yeah. I was. Which is haunted glasses. And I was going to say, and I, I think this might. So I don't know if this is even a joke anymore. Because I was just going to say something true, which is that that's what Lorelai and the Laser Eyes is no! kind of about. Like, that's kind <laughs> of what that Haunted game is glasses. about. Yeah, we were we were discussing at break that uh, Matt is a little imp, and he's like, yeah, you should play Nightmare Frames. And I'm like, oh, is it about Haunted Glasses? And he's like, yeah, it is. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And he's like, no. I'm like, what the fuck, Matt? <laughs> I was about like possessed because like you know I do a lot of goosebumps and are you afraid of the dark things and those are they have like stories about haunted glasses yeah yeah I told you it was a a horror story where all you have to do is not wear a pair of glasses but for (laughs) some reason everybody keeps putting them on Like, imagine. Just like, and I so believed like, him. These glasses will kill you. Don't put them on. And you just you just set them on your nightstand and you <laughs> stare at them for hours. And you're like, I, I got to put them on. God, do I have Oh, no, to they're haunted. On. Yeah, I told you. Okay. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. <laughs> how was your break? I know how your break was. It was terrible. We were dealing it was with terrible. technical we issues. We had tech problems. Uh, okay. 
we've both played the game a uh, duck detective. Uh, what, what is it called? Just the secret <laughs> salami. <laughs> the secret salami. Yeah. Duck Detective, what? The Secret Salami, I think, is the full name. Which we promise you guys is not as dirty as it sounds. <laughs> it, is, it is not even a little. <laughs> mm-mm, mm-mm. Oh, secret basi- Salami. It's basically a game you can play with little kids. So, <laughs> like, it's, it's not it's, means, it doesn't mean to be called that at all. It, it's accidentally called that. <laughs> Interestingly, like, you, I, I said that as well. I streamed this game mm. uh, when I was playing it. So, I was like, oh, I think you play this with your kids. But... I mean, there is swearing in the game, but it's not egregious. You know, there's no f bombs. There's like maybe a hell thrown in there or a damn thrown yeah. in there. So, um, yeah, I wrote. I actually wrote a review for this game um, that oh. should be going up at some point on Adventure Game nice. Hotspot. Uh, but what I said was that there are adult references that'll most likely go over a kid's head. Yeah. Uh, but it might cause like a, a very precocious child to ask some uncomfortable questions, right? Like there are <laughs> there are occasional slight drug references, occasional slight mm-hmm. sex references, and occasional cursing, um, mm-hmm. but not in a way that not much worse than those ones they would sneak into like Nicktoons or a uh, yeah. or a. A Pixar cartoon or something. No, those are far worse, honestly. <laughs> um, this one was pretty, yeah. pretty tame, I think. Um, but yeah, what? So you finished it? Yeah. So what? Uh, let's start with what you thought about it. Well, I loved it. Uh, I think I knew I would love it though because we both played the demo when that was uh, out for Next Fest, and I was so excited. <laughs> and I, I think the reason I was so ex- just so thrilled was. The voice acting in this game is phenomenal. So good. It's so good, you guys. I I was really impressed. It never got boring. Um, No. It was structured pretty well. Here's something I struggled with, though. And uh, I'll do a little refresher on the structure of how to solve crime. But you are a duck detective. You're a private eye. You're going through some stuff. You have a bread addiction. Your (laughs) wife divorced you. And some anonymous person has called you in to um, investigate a stolen lunch, yeah. which you will forget about by the end of the game. <laughs> right. <laughs> you he get forgets very about sidetracked. It. Yeah. Yeah. You get very sidetracked throughout the game. So it's pretty cut and dry. You are, you got your little notebook, kind of like, um, kind of like Dagger of Amon Ra. You can go refer to your notebook and put in information and stuff like that. And your goal initially is to get to know people. So, see, in this game, nobody tells you their name. You have to deduce their names because yes. nobody <laughs> is introducing themselves. So actually figuring out their names via finding clues in the world that you're in or having um, yeah. convos with other people, like not a single person introduces themselves. And I, you find I have out actu- the names. I have actually a little bit of a problem with this. I, I think that the deduction in this game actually requires just a tad bit of guesswork. Yes. There are times you learn two names. And yes. uh, once you, like, for example, you learn the names Laura and Sophie at right. roughly the same time. And you know it's one of their birthdays. Yes. So once you know which one's Laura, or once you know who Sophie is, everything else that you need to deduce falls into line. But there is like a little leap. You do have to go, I I think this is probably Sophie. And then then you say, okay, yeah, oh, it was. All right, now I know everything else. But the game is full of that where – it, it's kind of like a case of the golden idol light mm-hmm. um, where you have sentences that describe the crimes and you're filling them in with words that you pick up during right. your investigation. Yeah. And those um, words, they come from clues, from observational clues, you know, finding notes, finding dates on calendars, uh, looking at people's PC screens. That was a big one. Yeah. And also just talking to people in the office this is set at an, at an office <laughs> yeah a bus depot office yeah. um bear bus bear bus <laughs> uh, very cute and yeah you're looking for the secret salami in the bear bus it's 
Again, yeah. we promise there's nothing sexual going there's on. There's nothing. Here. I we pro it is literal salami, you guys. Literal. <laughs> and, it's, and it's a bus about that has a, an actual bear as its logo and its branch manager. Yeah, and all the all the characters are animals. Uh, it's very adorable. It's very well, uh, well voice acted. Mm-hmm. But I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with you, and I was hoping that you would agree with me on this mm-hmm. because there are p- parts points in my stream where I felt deflated trying to get the yeah. correct words for these deductions, and you're not penalized for them, which is nice. No. You know what are they gonna do? kill you like in Decker Bomb and Ra? I don't think so. <laughs> so there's no penalty, just your dignity being yeah. knocked down, you know? It's the same yeah, exactly. It's the same as Case of Golden Night Case of the Golden Idol or Return yeah. of Over Din, where it's just you know that the fun in this game is making your deductions. And so yeah. when you have to guess, you feel like you've just ruined a bit of the fun for yourself. Yeah. And man, I was going pretty well at the beginning of the game. I was getting yeah. everything. I felt pretty good about myself. And I think what happened, and I and I kind of went into this on my stream, was you are solving, just like any, any mystery, right? Mm-hmm. There's usually more going on than one suspects in a in this office setting right so everybody's got their own little story going on and every time i figured out someone's story my brain locked in on it it didn't it refused to let it go and i thought everything was so intertwined that i kept kind of messing up my deductions even though i knew even though like later i i gathered i'm like oh it's not gonna be that because i already figured that out (laughs) so interesting yeah so yeah, I really at, at the end there was a few I was really struggling that I got so close to. It was just a matter of like the right, the right words and going was, back and looking at notes and stuff like that. I was frustrated because there is a seduction that is part of this crime that um, I didn't pick up on. I didn't either until no. the game gave me a sentence that would have that required me yeah. to figure that out. I was like, wait, I thought this person was just desperately in love with this other person. I think right. I thought they had a short relationship and broke up. Right. I don't I don't see any clues leading up to here that shows me that this woman was intentionally seducing the man to Same. help to make him participate in the crime ring. And Same. No, and I and I say yeah. as much in my stream. I'm like, I thought this character was innocent and just another uh, and a victim of something else. Um I will so, say Yeah, I'm glad that you were all I'm glad we're on the same page yeah. because I'm like, Matt is gonna be so disappointed when I tell <laughs> no. him how stuck I got in this game. Well, this is the thing. Like Case of the Golden Idol is so meticulously structured so that every piece can only be its piece. And if you've yeah. guessed something wrong, you go, Oh, I'm an idiot for guessing. I should have uh, I shouldn't have filled in that name or that word until I really mm-hmm. understood what was going on. With Duck yeah. Detective, I felt like Guessing was the only way I was going to get this. Yep. Yeah, same. I'm like, yeah. you know, did you use the hint system at all? Did that help you? No, I didn't use the hint system. I, sh- I probably should have. I might have had a more fun time. Honestly, it's pretty helpful without being in your face, without giving you the solution. Yeah. It'll say, why don't you go revisit that note over there? Why don't you talk to this person that maybe right. you missed? Maybe there were a few cases of where I simply forgot to interrogate somebody about a specific subject. Um, did you knock over all the trash cans? Of course I did. That was the most fun for some reason. I thought that was the <laughs> funniest thing that like, so basically as the duck detective, you're like a sticker and you yeah, can it's walk, so cute. You, you can, you just like toddle around as like, like a person moving a sticker across like a color forms board or yeah. something. If you are older than 30, you will know what <laughs> color forms is. Um, like there's a lot of objects that are 3D and and, and tangible, and you could just yeah. like barrel into them and knock them all <laughs> over the place, and nobody comments on it. And yeah, it's nobody. Just like kicking trash around the whole office, and no one can. It's so funny to me. I also, knocked over some people's like pen holders. I'm like, what's yeah. my bad? <laughs> and nobody gets annoyed about it. Everyone just like 
carries on as if nothing's happening. There's also a dedicated quack button, so you can just run around the office quacking. I didn't and- know that. <laughs> yeah, um, it, it was it was uh, X on my controller, but I don't damn. know what it would be on the keyboard or mouse. Yeah, but- I, I feel like damn, my chat didn't bring that up either. So we must have just completely. I'll have to bring that up though, because I might do my own review on this game since it is you just- quite adorable. You can just run around the the office, knocking <laughs> trash quack. over and quacking at the top of your lungs, and it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of Untitled Goose Game, where the very first thing you do is like quack or honk, rather. <laughs> right. It felt yeah. It and then felt you can just like annoy what people, people enjoy about Untitled Goose Game. Yeah. Also, uh, who is who is your favorite character in the? Because I have a favorite, and you know I do. Who is your favorite? <laughs> um. Oh man, I maybe I'm just a maybe I'm a, a basic bitch, but I liked the Duck Detective the most. Oh, that's sweet, <laughs> Eugene, Eugene McQuacklin. Eugene McQuacklin, whose name I forgot, and I just got a note like right before we started recording, I got an email back from my editor on my review saying mm-hmm. I just read his name is Eugene McQuacklin, and you're calling Duck Detective the entire review. Maybe we should work <laughs> his name, and I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, they do, to, in your defense, they do refer to him as the duck detective when you're deducing. Yeah, he's not, yeah. You know what I mean? He's definitely called duck detective more often than he's called Eugene McQuacklin. Absolute, and by yeah. a factor of like 20. <laughs> Absolutely he is. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, my favorite character is Freddy the Crocodile. Okay, I thought you would. I thought it was either he's that so going to be cute. him or Laura, but I, I thought yeah, Laura. Laura's work ethic would annoy you. <laughs> But I thought well, I, her, mean, I felt sorry for her. I thought her caffeine addiction and uh, anxiety would endear you to her. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was endeared to her. I wanted her. I, I wanted to protect her. You know, she had a little. She had a friendship with one of the other workers there, the giraffe named Sophie. It was so cute. Yeah. But Freddie is just completely innocent. He's nearly blind. He's ta- he's holding the wrong <laughs> mug. He's holding Laura's <laughs> mug. <laughs> He has the he has a bag of salami, and he's like, "Oh, I just thought somebody put that there." <laughs> he's just so... <laughs> he has no idea what's going on, and yeah, he's no clue turns, what's going on. Then it turns out he's a big Duck Detective fan, and he <laughs> follows the Duck Detective on Twitter, and it's just like <laughs> like a like a stan. Yeah, yeah, it's so it's really cute. I like the voice acting uh, done by. Uh, Brian David David Gilbert. That's also, Brian David Gilbert. Yeah, it is. The unraveled guy. That guy. I had no idea that was his voice. That guy's so fucking funny. He's so funny. Yeah. He's <laughs> such. Wow. Okay. Yeah. It's it's so it's such a cute performance. I I felt like so bad for Freddie because <laughs> you learn real quick that poor Freddie is being framed. It's really obvious. I don't think any. Any thief would just keep the evidence in front of them. <laughs> it's just, it's very funny that it, it Eugene's like, can't... you know, you have the, the salamis right there. He's like, oh, I just thought somebody, I thought it was like surprise salami. And I laughed so hard. And just the whole game, he's just standing there holding a cup that says Laura. <laughs> yeah, he stole, he accidentally, he didn't steal it. He has bad eyesight, which you yeah. talk right away. He, ste- <laughs> he took Laura's mug. Did you and send- Laura hates him. Did you send anyone to prison at the end? I did. Uh, I sent one person to prison. I sent one person to prison. I bet we sent different people to prison. Oh, no. Okay. uh, We're going to say spoiler alert here. Okay. And I'll play some, I'll play like static here. And then I'll play static when, after we're done talking about the spoiler alert, because it'll be real quick. So just find, just, just fast forward to the static. Okay. Who'd you send to prison? Manfred. Okay. Because he's th- he's horrible. He is he the ring. He literally kidnapped someone. Yeah. Well, Who? didn't she? I thought she was in on the kidnapping. No, she wasn't in on the kidnapping. Oh, okay. He abducted her. Oh, maybe I misunderstood that part. Uh, oh, no. I sent, oh, no. I sent her to <gasps> prison because... Manfred had a f- okay. The bison was entirely innocent. We can agree there, right? Yeah, I didn't. I didn't send him to prison. Cause... Um, and the bear, 
And this is what Duck Detective says after you choose not to send him to prison. He has a family he's got to take care of, who he's the sole breadwinner for, mm. and he's only doing this because his business is falling apart. Yeah. So, uh, but he it, still kidnapped someone. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I guess I misunderstood. <laughs> but it so it did feel a little bit to me like he was just a desperate man in a desperate situation. Like, what's prison gonna help there? It's only gonna make a bad situation worse. Um, yeah. But so then, if you do if you do send him to prison, Doctor yeah. Detective's like, yeah, he was in charge of the whole thing. He got people in on it, and that, see what happened was Sophie felt bad. She wanted to snitch. And so he abducted her. Oh. Yeah. So Sophie, I sent Sophie to prison because she, to me, it was like she was the ruthless one of the group. She was the one who had no motive besides just greed. And okay, fucked with the bison, whatever the bison's name is, is just fucked with his heart for no reason. Boris, like, yeah. Yeah, like. The, the bear was trying to provide for his but family. But that's not illegal. He was feeling desperate. She manipulated <laughs> a man into, into uh, breaking the law just because okay, but- out of just like pure unadulterated greed. Like she has But no- she felt bad about it. That she okay. had a change of heart, which I think you didn't clock because I don't think, I don't I think you would have sent her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, so no. I said I said Sophie. And then I felt bad because then I was like when she was the only one who went to jail for the whole crime, yeah. I was like, oh, maybe I'm a little bit of an asshole here. <laughs> and now that you know, I'm like, uh, she was kidnapped and stuffed into a bus. <laughs> like, that's not, that's very illegal. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'm going to play the static and we'll come back. All right. Okay. So, final thoughts on Duck Detective. I love it. I uh, highly recommend it. Like I said, some of the deducing is challenging, mm-hmm. but there is a hint system. It's fun. It, it's short, so it's not... I, I think I, I was streaming it, so you know, keep in mind I'm kind of playing with mm-hmm. other people. I spent maybe three and a half hours on it in the stream. So yeah, I liked it. I think it's gorgeous. Great voice acting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, fun, fun game. Recommend. Uh, I feel the same way. I think it's, I, I just think it's a top-notch game. It's only about two hours long. Um, yeah. And to me, that was the perfect length. But if you're a person who doesn't yeah. play a lot, like, if finances are a concern for you with playing video games, so you don't play a lot, and you need a game that you can play, you know, for a long time or a bunch, that's something you might want to consider. But... yeah. To me, two hours was the perfect length for this game. Yeah. I mean, it's it's like going to a movie, but now you own the movie. You know, it's, <laughs> right, it's, yeah. Honestly, it's about the same. Yeah. It's like 12 bucks to see a movie out here. So, yeah. Right. Um, all right. That's Duck Detective. Do you want to talk about... <laughs> Jesus. Do you want to talk about Harvester with me? About the best game in the world? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Why don't we why don't we put on janky racks of chinos? Okay, man. <laughs> everyone welcome back i'm pushing up roses and my co-host matt Aukamp, hey. and we're here to tell you about harvester <laughs> harvester oh my goodness it is a 1996 full motion video mm-hmm. a- like acted like live acted yep, game live live acted yep uh <laughs> by digi digi fx interactive and yeah, I'm never gonna remember that was, honestly, because I don't yeah. think they did anything else. Uh, I don't. I honestly don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything about yeah. that studio. Um, I do know this was a controversial game when it came out. Kind of. So yes, okay. yes, and no. Okay. In essence, so the point of this game, and I, I'm sure people know about it. It's kind of a cult classic now, especially when it was re-released for for download on GOG and Steam. You know, streamers found it, people re-found it. 
and they're like, what the hell is this? So this game actually went through some production hell. It was actually delayed okay. for a while. It was meant to come out around the time that video games were going to Congress. So around the Night Trap era and the Mortal Kombat era. Oh, okay. However, I remember yeah. the story about this game. You're right. It's it, Yeah. Okay, I see where you're – okay, go ahead. Sorry. So it kind of misses a few marks because it took so long, you know, to get out that that was passed. We're in 1996 mm-hmm. now, man. Like, we've got our N64s out. Like, we're, we don't care anymore. Night Trap, who cares? You know? Okay. Mortal yeah. Kombat, we're past it. Uh, but that being said, it, it was banned in a few countries for being a gory and inappropriate, I guess, I guess you could say. Um, another interesting fact is, I don't know if you clocked this, but the actor is dubbed the main guy that you play. That's not his voice. He is dubbed Whoa, no, the I whole did, time. I did not know that. Yes. Yep. I thought it was. So that's fun. I knew it was dubbed in that I knew that we weren't listening to. Um, I, I knew we weren't listening to him talking as he was acting, but I th- right. didn't know it was somebody else's voice. I, yeah, I guess his voice just didn't uh, didn't resonate or Holy something, and cow. that's why everything. Now, now, keep in mind this this game is kind of meant to be unnatural and have something off about it, but there's something extra off about his voice acting, and that's because it is dubbed. Uh, he is not. They're matching another Holy person's voice cow. to that body. I did not know that stuff about this game. Yeah, it's wild. But yeah, the uh, the devs really wanted to make commentary they want to make an adventure game Mm -hmm. clearly while making commentary on the games that went to congress at the time and on violence and if if violence affects uh, kids or just people in general and it's it's very interesting the main point i always took that i always take away from harvester is it's not quite sure (laughs) um you know what i mean because there are parts in this game that acknowledge that yeah, America has a violence problem. Right. And that's but that's not that's not our the studio's responsibility. Mm-hmm. That's someone else's responsibility. Uh, and so they're kind of you know taking a few knocks at Hollywood for for being this way, for being this shallow kind of violent way. And at the same time, they're making fun of it by essentially. <laughs> some spoilers here not that anyone cares about <laughs> harvester spoilers but essentially your character is in a murder simulator yes. which is what congress would call some of these games right these are murder we're teaching kids how to murder your character is in a murder simulator so it's trying to make the notion that it's so over the top that it that of course it doesn't turn kids into murderers I don't agree with, like, obviously, if you were exposed to violence all the time as a kid, of course it's going to affect you. We are the product of our environment and and what we're influenced by all the time. Uh, But, you know, they're they're going pretty hard at it and saying, like, this doesn't matter. I I, I can't I can't decide. I can't decide if the (sighs) game thinks it matters or not because of all of these different angles. Like you said kind of earlier, it's layered. There's a lot of layers to this game. Well, it's also, (laughs) the game is, it tries to have its cake and eat too in a lot of different ways. Um, Yeah. There are times that the game seems to think that media does influence violence. um, Right. And there are times that it seems to think it does not. Um, Right. And it does the same thing with, uh, there are times that it seems to do, uh, be ridiculing the idea of homophobia, and there are times that the game is just straight up homophobic. There are times yes. that the game is ridiculing old school sexism, but participating in 1990s sexism. Right. And and that is purposely. I, I, I feel well, that is purposely. I feel like it is trying to get up right up to that edge you know right but I, I i don't know what point they're trying to make at that point so okay why don't we walk through the game and why don't we walk through it as if as if this is all as sincere and b movie as it appears and then we can revisit yeah. these things in the context of the twist at the end yeah so do you do you want to start out with just like the very basic plot here Yeah, let's just give them the very basics. So you are playing a character named Steve Mason, Mm -hmm. and you wake up and you have amnesia. Yeah. Uh, You don't remember anything. Uh, 
you seem to wake up in what is your own home and you have a mom there but she's very off she's speaking very off you have a little brother who's also very off he's glued to the tv watching violent tv and so you're pretty much already getting kind of these points thrown at you but yes you you have amnesia you're able to leave the house and explore this town that's called harvest so that's the name of the town is mm-hmm. harvest and everybody again is is a little off but the one thing that's consistent is everybody wants you to join the lodge that seems to be the thing to do mm-hmm. but in order to join the lodge you have to <laughs> do tasks that the let's call him the lodge master i don't know if he has a name <laughs> who all is, i know is yeah. that his mouth doesn't move when he talks and it's very strange correct um he, he'll he'll give you these increasingly violent and or immoral unethical tasks to do around this town there's only one other person in the town that also doesn't remember anything that and that's stephanie potsdam who is uh, your neighbor i guess and she also has amnesia. She's saying no one, no one believes them and that there's something wrong. And to bond over this, they have very bad FMV sex. <laughs> it is the worst sex you will ever see in your entire life. <laughs> you know, for, for all this game is trying to do, it certainly skimped on these Yeah, sex where did she scenes. get that really fancy lingerie, by the way? I don't know. Like- <laughs> She's just, that's what she wears, you know? Um, so... Yeah, and you and her are engaged to be married, and you do not yeah. know who she is at all. And right, never met. Yeah, uh, she is uh, the entire game. She is, but yeah, in order to feel something, you know, they right. they get it on, and you can get it on at any time. I think, if I'm recalling, if you want to see that scene, I think you can have sex two separate times. Oh, I think you're right. I think you can have you can have sex on like the third day and then you can have sex right before stephanie dies <laughs> um well it's uh, so romantic quote unquote dies um quote unquote so because yeah, there's a twist breaking down like the individual events right so you you wake up when you say your brother's glued to the tv he's watching violent tv like uh mm-hmm. these really unbelievably violent um uh uh I'll, I'll use the parlance of nineteen the 1950s where this is supposed to take place. A Cowboys yeah. and Indians show. Yes. Yeah. Um, but Steve makes comments as if he does think this is inappropriate. He does think that it is inappropriate yes. for a kid to be watching stuff this violent. And that yeah. starts to make me wonder what the perspective of this game is, right? Like, does... Right. It, uh, and like, yeah. we even go to the station if you recall yes. we go to the station that is in charge of that show of that very violent show and it seems like the game is saying yeah hollywood doesn't care it's wrong and they don't care but they're gonna do it anyway to profit because that's that's america they give you, know? you they basically give you two dialogue options in all of these encounters and one is clearly like the evil option and one's the good option yeah and the evil yeah. option is being like oh yeah it rules and the good option is being like <laughs> this is wrong and kids shouldn't be watching this and it's like what if i yeah. feel somewhere in between these two things yeah where's the nuance here <laughs> Um, especially Harvester is not a game with nuance, my friends. Um, and like your, your brother keeps telling you about this, your dad being missing and people keep talking about your dad being sick. Um, yeah. And like, I, I, maybe we'll get to that in a little bit, but you talk to your mom. She doesn't really want to talk about your dad. Mm-hmm. Did you ever try to say fuck to the mom? Of course. Yes, of course. Of course I did. Uh, Yeah. It's really uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah, it is. She asks. If I mean, you're... yeah, it's it's very uncomfortable. We can talk about it. You know, she in this in this town of Harvest, uh, sex is very taboo. Yeah. In this game, because it is like this sadistic, masochistic thing where the women dom their husbands so hard that it leaves them incapacitated. So the dad is not missing. He is simply incapacitated mm. or or as the mom says, out of commission. <laughs> so if you yeah, if you ask the mom to if you say, you know, all fuck you have to say is say, fuck, yeah. 
Yeah, all you have to say is fuck yeah. She'll be like, eh, not, not maybe later. Yeah, she's since like, your father's out of commission, you know. Yeah, she asks if you're inv- if it's an invitation, and then you get the option to be like, ew, no, or yeah, yeah, want to go for it or something like that. Yeah. It's so fucking weird. Um, it's very strange. And and then yeah, and then she says like, oh, maybe later if you ask her to go for it. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I mean that proves right there that this is not this is not our mom this is not our beautiful house this is not our beautiful wife this is not anything uh um, and clearly every mom in the game also is the same actress yes it's the same mom yes yeah. it's the same mom and he you can comment on it as well steve does comment on it several times yeah um and that being said it i i want to mention because mm-hmm. this is sort of interesting for adventure games I think it's it's both point and click. Also, you do get a text parser, and that's why you're able to just input uh, certain words. Correct. But- so you can input the word fuck and see what people say to that. But it's, it's bad. It's bad. Be- it's bad. Yeah. Most words don't work. Even words yeah. that are incredibly relevant to the game or the conversation you're having. Somebody will say something yeah. like, um, you know, like, Oh, uh, don't go near Mr. Potsdam. He's a weird guy or something. And then you say Mr. Yeah. Potsdam and they'll be like, I don't understand what you're talking about, dear. And it's like, what the fuck? You just, you just told me this man's name. Yeah. Th- those kind of prompts rarely work. I find yeah. the best, the best prompt that does that is probably the Colonel's Bequest where you are, you, you get interrogative. That's part of it. You are interrogating people mm-hmm. and that works pretty well and it stays pretty relevant and it understands all the keywords this is a crapshoot i'll say in in harvester I'll, I'll give you two other games that it works really well and one is um uh mean streets which is what i like so okay. much about that game the first tex murphy game ever is Got really it. good at this um in fact you have to remember details and ask people about them with a text parser that that's how you do the investigation nice. and that's why i like that game so much um yeah and then uh, more recent games, like the Devecchi Studios games, like um, uh, The Infectious Madness of Dr. Decker does it really well. Right, right. But, yeah, this game does it horribly. <laughs> um, it's not good. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's so hopeful, too. I'm like, ooh, neat. I love a text parser moment. I hope this is clever. It is not. It's not. It's <laughs> it is not. Uh, you can only, yeah, you can really only ask about things that, and this is a weird thing, too. You have um, topics show up in, like, a, a, like, a menu that you can ask about. Yeah. And they just start disappearing from the menu for no reason, whether you click on them or not. Do you think that is intentional, knowing what we do about the game? Uh, no, I, I no, I, okay. I, I think it, I think they, I think they programmed it to be like, oh, you can comment on the things that were just said, um, okay. without collecting them, which is, yeah, to me, just bad design. <laughs> sure, um, sure. Uh, so there's some other characters. So, uh, oh. There's another weird thing, which is you take your you instead of getting the newspaper delivered every morning, you have to bring your newspaper out to the newsboy or he shoots and kills you dead. Right. And that's one of the first puzzles, too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. They everyone's like, remember to take the paper out for the for the newsboy or whatever. (laughs) Right. And you're like, I don't know what that means. I guess they mean go get the paper from the newsboy and then you walk outside yeah. and he's like do you have my paper and you're like no and he shoots you dead yeah <laughs> like, the people of harvest are not great Mm-mm. although interestingly there are a couple quote good characters like um the waitress the, yeah at the the restaurant Edna. but everybody else is a very particular type of awful um, Mr. Mr. Or weird. Mr. Potsdam has a peephole that he drilled in Stephanie's wall that he yep. watches her. He just watches her, right? He watches. Yeah, he just even during her. your yeah. t- horrible sex scene, he's watching and That's so gross. Uh, panting on the other side of the the peephole. He also at, he's obsessed with meat. He's obsessed with meat. He's obsessed with getting into the lodge. At one point, he kidnaps a little girl, and this is. This is going to get rough, 
people, so... Yeah, it gets really dark. Um, at one point, he kidnaps a little girl, molests her, and then buries her alive. Bury, yeah, yeah. Um, and part of the game is you saving the little girl, and people get mad at you for saving... Some people celebrate you for saving the little girl. Some people get mad yeah. at you for saving the little girl, and nobody believes that Mr. Potsdam did it. Right. You can even catch him in the act. Um, yeah, yeah, you can. That's why I'm I'm recalling the the exact scene where you're actually catching him he tells, and seeing him do it. He tells you he's he's digging a hole and he tells you he's burying a cat, and you say, "Where's right. the cat?" And he's like, "Back at home. Leave me alone. You could get in." He's like, "You could get yourself in trouble for things like this or something like that." Like he's like basically warning mm-hmm. you about observing things. And then yeah. the next day you find out the little girl, the daughter of the uh, of Edna, the owner of the diner. Yeah, the waitress. Yeah, mm-hmm. she's missing. And if you go to where Mr. Potsdam was and dig up the grave, yeah, she's just in there. She's just in it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you can save her. Um, um, and yeah, there's also, there's dark moments in that somebody unalives themselves. Um, because you are instructed to do such terrible, violent things in order to get into the lodge. It's like um, initiation almost yeah. is like they're testing you they tell how you, far you can go. They tell you it's all just pranks, but almost every prank results in something horrible. They tell you to like scratch up a car and it, it drives a man insane. <laughs> they tell yeah. you to uh, they tell you to steal a barber pole and it makes a guy electrocute himself to death by accident. Yeah, that results in in death. Um, uh, and then and burning down the restaurant down which the restaurant. yields some of the worst results. And it's they tell you to steal fabric. So here's another thing. Okay, so the firemen um are just like an elaborate gay joke. Um they Correct, they yes. say that they're flaming, get it? Yes, Do you get exactly. it? Exactly. Yeah. They call their they say it's the house of flame and the firemen are just in there painting a naked man at all times. Um Yes. And they have a, a nice bolt of purple fabric that you have to steal and when you do, they basically get into a non-stop fight. Um you don't see just people reference and then they are not yeah. around to put out any of the fires that then later happen in the town, including the one you start. Right. And okay. Right. Right. Yep. Um, yeah. Uh, she, even the diner owner says something about her close friendship with the guy from the barber shop who got electrocuted to death, and you wonder if maybe like these things have all been le- like connected. Yeah, I think they I think they are connected. I think they're all leading into the next thing. Right. Like um there's a, like I don't know there's so much dialogue in this game and some of it yeah, is hidden. Um maybe not intentionally, but again because dialogue options like things to ask about just kind of disappear from your menus. So, yeah. I I get the sense that there is some connection because both the man whose car you scratch and the barber, they both have the same kind of alarm systems. So I wonder mm-hmm. if it's if you put the pieces together, if you get all the dialogue and put the pieces together, if it's something like you scratch the car to distract the man so that you can right? steal the barber pole. It's like that song, like the old woman who swallowed a fly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just keep doing stuff. Right. About the homophobia, right? There is a character that you meet who is just utterly condemns. This is the 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 general store owner. She utterly condemns the firemen. Um, Yeah, and she when you have to buy porn from her at some point. Um, Yeah. Oh, I remember that now. Yep. And she she's like, "This is hell. That's good. Uh, Like this is healthy for a young boy of your age. Um, It'll keep you from becoming one of those." Uh, like amoral, whatever she says, like so these disgusting, like she says something judgmental. Right. Um, yeah. Talking about the firemen. And so the game is clearly, especially knowing what we know, is being satirical here. It is right. trying to tell you this woman is a product of 1950s shitty reality and she mm-hmm. she's a bad person for being so homophobic. But at the same time... Yeah. The game is giving you this pun 
about flaming. Right. And, it, it, like you said earlier, it's participating yeah. in it as well. All the firemen. Yeah, the point gets lost. All the firemen are a gay joke. All of them have these really over the top, lispy, fey accents. Yes, all of them. Yeah. Yep. I remember. I can hear it in my brain mm-hmm. right now. Yeah. And again, they spend all their time painting a nude man. Like, yeah. Who they keep under a sheet when uh, right. the fire <laughs> department right. is closed. Right. And it's just so. It's just so bizarre uh, th- because, yeah, some of this is legitimately offensive, but one could also say, if you wanted, one could make the argument like, yep, we're doing that on purpose. It is on purpose. But we're not meaning to participate in this, but we are trying to offend certain people. I, yeah, I just, you know? I don't understand what's satirical about being like having a bunch of, you know, uh, gay stereotypes being the fireman no. painting a nude man. Like, I don't see how that's satire. To me, that's just meant to make people go <laughs> while they're playing. Yes, exactly. Like, laugh, it's meant like, to be edgy, edgelordy. There's no real point to some of these things. And it's just interesting because there are, like we said, there are some good points. Mm-hmm. It's not devoid of interesting thought, you know, thought what am, I, what am I trying to hear? Thought-provoking ideas. Uh, yeah. Uh, Thought-generating. Yeah, which we'll get to when we talk about the twist. But, like, okay, the game, again, clearly we're supposed to hate Mr. Uh, uh, Potterdam for... Potsdam, yeah. Potsdam, sorry, for mm-hmm. peeping on Stephanie. Um, yes. We're also supposed to have, again, there are conflicted views about pornography, right? There is a police deputy who is married, and so he's not allowed to buy pornography from the general stores. That's why we have to buy him pornography. But when you talk to him, he says basically, like, a man has needs and he's not getting them met by his wife, and he's not allowed to have pornography. And so you feel a little bit bad for this guy. Like, oh, this guy is saying he can't... (laughs) He can't ejaculate. He has no he has no respite for his sexual right. appetites. That does legitimately suck. That is a yeah. bad fate for a human being and no one yeah. Yeah. no one on earth should be just like completely denied all their sexual agency, right? Right. Um But then the game is trying to present this like distorted warp warped reality. And it's also so clearly it's at the same time trying to tell you pornography is bad, right? Like it's trying to ridicule yeah. this woman for saying, oh, that's a healthy appetite for a growing boy when you buy the porn. And it's like, well, which is it? Are we supposed to feel bad yeah, for the guy who can't get the porn? <laughs> or are we supposed to feel disgusted that anyone would want to look at porn? And yeah. sorry, and I know I'm, I'm going on and I'll, I want to hear your perspective, uh, but what I'm building to is – the game also does put in a ton of f- fucking cheesecake shots of Stephanie undressing mm-hmm. in lingerie, shackled up to a machine in her bra yep. and underwear. Yep. Right? Like, yeah. It's it's hard to say. Like, there's one basically independent female character in the whole game, and she spends the entire game. A prisoner. Right, yeah, in her room. And half the game naked. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I guess if you were to look at it like it is an exploitation game. Mm-hmm. And, and I, I talk about this in my review, too. That this is the best thing I can, uh, can compare it to. Is like a John Waters type of movie where mm-hmm. there are things in there just, just to shock. And offend you. I don't know right. if you've seen many of the John Waters films, you know, prior to, to Hairspray or something. <laughs> but it, uh, it, they were controversial right. and they did weird things on camera and they didn't have a satirical point. I think John Waters just wanted to see how far you could push something. Right. You know, where's the line? When do you get offended by something and does it matter? Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost kind of like a nihilistic viewpoint. But, but that, but that's so. <laughs> 
But that's not fair because the game is trying to make a point. So you can't be like, here's the point we're trying to make, but also we're also just trying to shock you. Right. It, yeah, I don't think it knows which lane it's in or, or which lane the devs meant to put it in. And maybe, you know, like I said, it did go through production hell. There's so many characters. I wonder if any, everything just kind of got lost because you know as well as I do that this game changes genre by the third disc it is not an adventure uh, game by yeah. the end and yeah and there are plenty of things in this game that have no bearing on the game's plot or right. uh any of the puzzles they're just things that are there and you don't really know why they're there at all yeah. besides just to be weird um yeah I, I that's what is so confusing about this game is the game trying to tell us the world is a like a corrupted and morally failing spiral um, that is all about objectionism and s- sex yeah. and violence and uh, cruelty and murder and what like and it's trying to like show us this like almost like cautionary tale of like this is how the world right. is go this is the direction the world's moving in (laughs) or is it trying to tell us none of this is that big of a deal and everybody's stupid for um blaming all of the world's problems on things like violence in movies and video games or pornography or sex i i yeah i think it's really i think the best way to say that and to and to to describe it is that it's just missing the mark Mm -hmm. i think that's what they wanted to do I think they wanted to say, this isn't a big deal. Look, we're making this into a game. We're putting all these edgy things into it. It's not a big deal. And that's... Are you still there? Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so, yeah, I think they tried to say that we're going to be as edgy as we can because it's not a big deal, you guys. But it got mixed up with <laughs> with some of these more morally generated dialogues. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's... But I do, I do believe that they were trying to make something edgy for the sake of edgy. But maybe something got lost in translation. Maybe they felt, maybe even the devs felt bad about a few things, so they wanted to put their own perspective or tried to put nuance in it. But I would say this game does not have nuance in it at all. <laughs> no, it it has. I think it has layers, but none of them are nuanced. The only way you could see nuance in this game is by observing how some of the layers contradict each other and right but like you're saying i don't think that was intentional (laughs) yeah i wish i knew what the intention was as far as far as i know that's the intention because like i said it was it was going to be released around the time when those games went to to congress so i can only speculate really that that was their intention was to make something shocking for the point of doesn't matter. Look, you played this game. Are you a murderer now? You know what I mean? Yeah. It was kind of it was almost bratty. <laughs> right. So you know, this is bratty sentiment, you know? Before we get to the third disc, which is has the twist <laughs> and has and is just wanna, I don't even want to deal with just that. It's so Such bullshit. different. Um Yeah. I do want to talk about the things that that I I I wonder what you think about them. That it's like why is this in the game? Yeah, sure. First of all, there is an abandoned house where a woman lives named the mm-hmm. Wasp Woman, and she's surrounded yeah. by wasps. Um, like, her entire house is one big wasp nest, and you can talk to her, and she tells you that wasps are misunderstood, and that too many people want everything to be productive, um, mm-hmm. and w- wasps are beautiful just for existing even if they don't make honey even if they do hurt people which is an interesting yeah. sentiment but doesn't go doesn't go anywhere uh right <laughs> and she has no bearing on the game you do not need to go into that house to beat the game right no i, I there are playthroughs that i went into the house there were playthroughs where i didn't at all i think that was i really do think that the devs, even though they were trying to say this doesn't matter, mm-hmm. they were still trying to be somewhat artistic with it, you know, by tr- by putting in these little tidbits, right, mm-hmm. uh, to make it 
artsy or, or poignant, maybe to drive home the point that this game can exist even if it hurts people. Right. And it still has some kind of point to it. Just like wasps. You know, nobody likes wasps. Right. All they do is hurt people. They're jerks. So I'm I'm thinking that is meant to be a metaphor for the game. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't think it's readily apparent. No. And I think if you're playing it, you want this to go somewhere because you want it's an adventure game, right? So any character you talk to, you want it to have some bearing on what you're doing, but I think that was purely metaphorical. Okay. Um or just weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just weird for the sake of weird. The other thing is there is a uh there's a missile silo. Yeah. Uh there's a there's like a, a military base full of nuclear missiles being guarded by a man with no legs. He lost them in World War II. Um and he's got there's no controls on the missiles, meaning he's got a button on his person that if he presses it, all the nuclear missiles will launch. <laughs> um, yes, yes, and you he's got to destroy the world. Yes, and he's got a machine gun. Um, yes, you can talk to him. He's a real uh, uh, problematic creep about basically every issue. He's like yep. on the wrong side of every single issue that is brought up in the game. Um, yeah, and. Uh, if you select the wrong dialogue options at certain points, he shoots you in the head and then blows up the world. Yeah, you can mess up massively mm -hmm. and just end up blowing up the world. I, I don't recall if he has any, if he progresses the game in any way. Because I feel like I was so on the edge of ruining my game mm -hmm. that I tried to just avoid that in general. So I'll say Harvester is interesting in that there are a couple puzzles that you can solve in different ways. Um, yeah. Uh, there are, you need to blackmail somebody and there's several different ways to get the evidence to blackmail them. Um, then other minor things like you need to scratch a car and you can use a bunch of different inventory items to do it depending on what right. you have. Um, right. And I, so I imagine there are other branches like that, other ways to solve puzzles that I, I'm unaware of. And I don't know if yeah. he factors into any of those, but I will say um, in my first playthrough a couple years ago, I kept going back to him and could never find a use for him. Then I played it again <laughs> right away to get a different ending and yeah. didn't talk to him at all. In this playthrough yeah. I played today to refresh myself, I played about half the game. Um, yeah. And I got out of this, I got to the third disc, which again, we'll talk about. Um, and I didn't talk to him. I talked to him once to get him to shoot me and blow things up just so I remembered that was there. Yeah. That was the only time I talked to him the whole game. Like he hasn't. So yeah. I don't know if you can use him to solve a puzzle, but I know you can get through the whole game without talking to him once. Yeah, and, and because it is such a risk to talk to this character, yeah. I'm just like, nah. <laughs> yeah. It's just pointless. I don't want to mess up my game. But like you're saying, the, the development hell and that we're, that there's like these competing messages in the game. I wonder yeah. if what you were saying earlier, like there's all these characters that maybe had other arcs that mm. got deleted from the game or like the game yeah. went a different direction and they wanted to leave the performances in or something. That's true. There, there really are a lot of characters. Now that I'm, now that we're re-talking about it, it's like, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> this is a, uh, this is overwhelming. Um, you know? Yeah. There's the postman who keeps burning mm -hmm. stuff down. There's two. Here's another one. These characters give you a hint as to how to steal the barber pole. Yeah. But there is a, um, uh, a little person and a big tall uh hick wearing only overalls and they are Ugh. in the barber shop i think what are they playing chess or something um yeah i think so i think they're playing a game they're playing some sort of game um you don't have to talk to them the whole game they'll give you again a, right. a little bit of a hint about just the fact that there is an alarm system in the, right but that's it and to be honest some of the dialogue is so grating that I was, I feel like I was 
not incentivized to talk to everybody. Yeah. Because I'm like, there's only so many gross conversations I can uh, I can handle. Yeah. You know. Agreed. Yes. And uh, yeah, I, I I don't I don't know what the purpose of all of these characters was. <laughs> Uh, I don't either. And then when I mean, I guess if we keep in mind like what is about to happen in the third disc, they may not have any purpose whatsoever. You also have a m- massive inventory by the time you hit the third yes. disc, and you have a bunch of yeah. weapons. And there's no place to use those weapons. You can attack anybody at any time, but almost yeah. all every single time you attack somebody, you'll go to jail and the game's over. So, like, right. I don't know why you have this collection of weapons. <laughs> Is that not for the the third disc, which I refuse to play ever again? It's that frustrating to me. I do remember mm-hmm. enough of it, but, man. Okay, so the third disc, your entire inventory gets wiped out, and you get and you are given one weapon. Right. The scythe? Uh, uh, no, you find the scythe. Sickle? You find the scythe later. You, you are given the sickle okay. that is the Harvester logo. Right, yeah, the sickle. So, okay. so right, okay. <laughs> yeah, it changes into melee. Right, but yeah, right before the third disc, I guess we should say, um, you get invited into the lodge, um, by uh, you. Stephanie is presumed dead because she goes missing, and on her pillow is a skull and a spine. Right, um, and and an invitation into the lodge. If you bring the invitation, invitation, the guy's like, "Nah, this isn't it, man." You have to go get her skull and spine, and that's the invitation. Yeah. And so you break into yeah. a march, like you break into their like family crypt or some shit. Oh my god, it's so weird. And, <laughs> what the heck? And then, oh my god, then you're in the lodge, which is a new mm. game. Yeah, it's a new game completely. There's no more, I guess, what you could call point and click puzzles. You are not no more. <laughs> Not there yeah, are right. yeah there no actually more. there are actually a, a bunch of them. It's just it's just there's a lot of combat now. There's now so much combat, and some of the point and click puzzles yeah. can be avoided by just killing people. That's true. Yep, that is true. So it's become clear, I think, and maybe it's not clear to the viewer yet that I, the game is now you are in the murder simulator now. So everyone is pushing you to join this lodge. Why? To, to train you, right. essentially, to become a killer. Why, we don't quite know, Mm-mm. but that is essentially what we're doing. So the game changes genres completely, and obviously that's by, you know, by very strategic design here. Mm. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's really... I, and- I could go deeper with it, but I don't think the game is trying to be that deep. I think they just wanted combat to represent the, the murder simulator part of this point right you You just travel through all these like even more distorted visions of reality Mm -hmm. and there's like a bunch of gore and dead bodies you get attacked by monsters you kill them and it's it's literally like you have a button that's attack and you have it the whole game and again you never and it is tricky you never (laughs) use it but you could just you like right click on the mouse or whatever and then he just swings his weapon um yeah and that's it that's it and you just kind of walk through all these weird levels, solving like very obtuse puzzles, and they all have some sort of like morality clause that are way too muddled to even dissect. Um, yeah. And like, th- there's one room where a bunch of babies are eating a mother, and the mother starts lecturing yeah. you on how this is what motherhood is yeah, about. Yeah, this is what motherhood is. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, um, it is. I mean, I will say it's it's not as gross as maybe some of the things you see in Phantasmagoria, but it's it is gross and the sentiment is gross. You know, it's like what the what is the point? Right. At some point, you get like a human torso and you have to throw it into like a bubbling like sewer so that a monster yeah. doesn't come out and eat you. Um, yeah you know classic adventure (laughs) game puzzles at other points you have to just kill totally innocent people because they have an item you need like it's so yeah weird and then you i like is there anything about this section you want to talk about or should we just fucking skip to the end like it's just so bizarre there's nothing to talk about it is i just want to say it is one of the most frustrating gameplay experiences i've ever had though the combat is not good. I, I, I was dying a lot. The puzzles aren't I good was, either. 
the puzzles aren't good either no they're they're bad it's too long there's too many rooms they're all ugly i just i have nothing and it's so long to say. you're it, it, it yeah it is not half the game but it yeah, feels I, I can, like half the game it does yeah i can i can honestly say at least i was having some fun in this weird town <laughs> of harvest at least there were things to do and people to talk to yeah now i'm fighting for my life (laughs) this is not why i choose adventure games like i i like fighting games a lot uh but i don't want it a hybrid i don't want a hybrid one (laughs) necessarily yeah and if i if i do want one i want it to work you know the controls need to be in somewhat working condition yeah absolutely so okay yes I agree. So you get to the end of this thing if you can stand it. and If you can stand it, yeah. What you find out is what Rosa said. You are in a simulator. There is a society of what call themselves harvesters. That it, it's serial killers. Um, yeah. And they want to make other serial kill- killers to just, like, cull the human race. And they yeah. are trying to make you into a serial killer. And that's what this whole thing has been about. And they they have tried to make a realistic world, but right. the participant's subconscious always influences the simulacrum. Right. So there's like, quote, glitches. You know what I mean? Right. So taking the newspaper yeah. out rather than bringing it in. Um, your mom wanting to fuck you. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, and... and <laughs> Then you can start to work your way backwards and think like, okay, um, maybe when you don't know, when you're a kid and you don't know what your parents are doing behind the doors, maybe you could imagine a violent scenario. And maybe that's why in this world, uh, what the parent, what the parents do in the bedroom is so unbelievably violent. Maybe, yeah. um, because you're a horny teenage boy, that's why every man in this game is unbelievably horny. Um, right. <laughs> right. Right. You, you can kind of like, maybe maybe you do see the idea of your, you do see your girlfriend's father as just like a meat obsessed, uh, yeah. lazy pedophile, pedophile bum. Disgusting. Yeah. Because yeah. maybe, you know. I, I don't know, maybe some Freudian thing, like they're the gatekeeper of the woman that you want to be with. Like, maybe there's some right. deep psychology shit to that. Um, and yeah, so again, you can go back and kind of look at a lot of these scenarios and be like, okay, maybe this is how... Um, oh, there's also like an a, 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 a insanely disciplinary, like violently disciplinarian teacher at one point. So you can look back at that and be like, oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I almost forgot about that. Um, yeah. She beats children with a baseball bat. Um, yeah. And seemingly kills one. It's hard to tell. Um, yeah. It's, so it, it, it does change the context of this game a little bit because you're kind of like, Okay, so this was supposed to be a schlocky B movie, right? This all of this was supposed to be weird and wrong and hyper exaggerated and morally uh, warped. Yeah, and that's why, that's why, listener, we, me, and Roses are are bouncing back and forth about the morality of this game so much because it's like, yeah, okay. Oh, you're saying a lot of this is bad by saying it is a um, simulator created by serial serial killers to turn people into serial killers. I guess to help them see the worst sides of humanity and why humanity must be destroyed. Yeah. Um, but at the same, with the, you and- know, with the sentiment of like, but this isn't. This couldn't. See how absurd this is. Why are you calling video games murder? Do you see how absurd this is? This would never happen in, right. in reality. But also, you know, yeah. But also, you're doing it as the game designer. You also did make yeah. me interact with a child molester and yeah, yeah. You know, uh, blackmail people for being caught making out in the closet and uh, yeah. have sex with this woman who 
I don't know and do- doesn't know me and like we're just thrown together by this like and yeah. made me watch her undress like seven times. Um, yeah, like seven. Yeah, it's a lot, guys. <laughs> like she's in her underwear a lot. You did put oh, and you find out that every time you've been advancing in this horrible lodge game, mm-hmm. uh, it has been inflicting pain on. Stephanie, who is still alive and in her underwear and strapped up to like a torture machine. Uh, So I just, what? (laughs) Yeah. So, I mean, what do you feel? How do you like, and we'll talk about the very ending in a second, but how do you feel about this twist? Not great. Um, I feel like they got their point across. (laughs) I feel like the point is finally concluded. If you get, if you tolerate the third disc, and you can get to that, then you can maybe decide that the main intention was to show the viewer that video games being murder simulators is absurd. Yeah. This, like, look at this. Did this turn you into a bad person? You know, it, they're, they're taking it so exaggerated that you can, you can then determine that that is their intent. But again, that doesn't erase the competing messages that right. we get in game. Yeah. Uh, that they also decided to put in. Um, if I look at it purely as like an ex- exploitation film esque type thing, I can maybe get a little <laughs> entertainment out of it. But man, I mean, well, I, 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 I am entertained by I, Harvester. Yeah. I think most of us are. And I think, and this is weird, but I'm, ju- I'm just gonna say it. I like this game. <laughs> yeah, no, I do. I do like it. Which is weird to say. Yeah. It, it's become kind of this cult classic that you kind of know what you're getting into. But part of me does realize and know that there is an edgelord thing to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, part of me knows that they were purposefully not trying to be as schlocky as maybe we thought. <laughs> and they were just trying to maybe be offensive, you know, and yeah. be edgy. So part of me, like, uh-huh. I do like the game, but I'm like, ugh, <laughs> these devs, what were they doing? And, what were they doing? You know, and the first time I played it, like, I'll admit, and this is a little embarrassing, but the first time I played it, I actually had my mind blown by this ending a little bit. Be- oh, wow. Because, and again, it's a little bit embarrassing because I know how basic of a twist this is, how, like, it, it's made to, it's kind of seems deeper than it is. Um, and we've yeah. torn that apart throughout the, you know, our discussion <laughs> yeah. here. But the first time, it was like, as I was playing the, I think this is why, the first time as I was playing the game, I kept thinking, you know, this, what is this ridiculous game? Like, yeah. Like, I've discovered something that I know has a cult following, but like, I've discovered something that is just utterly bizarre and, I can tear it apart because what were these people thinking? And then at the end, it's yeah. like, oh, we they're telling you we did this intentionally. Yes. And then you're yeah. like, oh, and you like <laughs> it makes you sort of feel like like they got you and like you um, they out yeah. they outsmarted you. Yeah. But then again, as we like re-examine the game, it's like, well. No, they're not as smart as I kind of thought they were at the moment. <laughs> right, right. I, I, I will give it credit for trying to do this, mm-hmm. for, you know, for trying to put in those little artistic moments in there and put metaphors in there and try to give us a message. I I like that some of the message are like, yeah, America is really violent mm-hmm. and that kind of sucks, right. you know, and nobody takes really responsibility. Nobody really cares. Um, only to have that be obliterated by, you know, being in a simulation that is uh, literally a murder simulator. Um, which, if you don't know, uh, yeah. I believe is what politicians were calling some of those games at the time. Oh! And that's why. Yes. Okay. It is direct. It is direct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So, you know, games like Night Trap and Mortal Kombat, I believe some of the politicians referred to it as, as a murder simulator. Hey, when, Someone did. When are we going to do did. our episode on Night Trap? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if I can get it running well, good lord. Um, I'm not sure I can even tolerate night trips. Yeah, to be I honest have, with you. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. I don't one. know that I could either. Um, yeah. Okay. So now we'll talk about the very, very end. Um, okay. 
so then the last thing you do in the game is you make a choice. Uh, you get, and again, this sort of gets in the way of their point, I think. So your choice is mm. to um, stay in Harvester and marry Stephanie. Right. I forgot we had a choice. And yeah, go on. Live out your life in what you now know is a simulation, you know is fake, while your body is in suspended animation somewhere, and yeah. your real body will live, whatever, five minutes. But you will experience an entire life. Knowing, right. again, knowing it's meaningless. Or, you can give in. You can kill Stephanie. You can, Stephanie right. is in her underwear at your feet, screaming. Yeah. You can attack her with the attack button. And <laughs> so terrible. Kill her, and uh, you'll go back. Then they'll allow you to go back to your body, yep. and become a serial killer. Yep, become a yeah. You can become a serial killer. That's that's the choice. That's the end of the game. Again, if they're making this point that hey, isn't this all ridiculous? Uh, or if they're making this point like yeah, isn't are like. Isn't all the stuff we just put you through, like, uh, a symptom of an ailing society or what? Like, whatever, yeah. whichever way they're going, either way, attacking a live actress yeah. in her underwear, groveling at your feet with a weapon until she dies, I don't see how that's making your point! No, it's not. It is, uh, it's kind of gross, honestly, mm -hmm. If you think about it. And again, they're doing it with intention. They're trying to say it doesn't matter. Uh, which is rough. Which is a rough uh, a rough sentiment to get down with these days. You know? <laughs> Just to be like, yeah, it doesn't matter. To not, you know, further think about the actions of, of what you're doing is strange. So uh -huh. I, I actually chose the simulation. I didn't want to kill Same. Stephanie. Yeah. And I, I, when they say it doesn't matter, it's like... Again, I, I, maybe I'm leaning into this too hard, but like that's a real, <laughs> that's a real actress. That's a real yeah. actress that is in her real underwear in her real body, and I am pretending to kill her, and she is screaming. And like, does it not matter that like is going to give me an emotional effect? Yeah, yeah, that does for sure. So it does. It does matter. It, yeah, it's not yeah, going to turn me matter. into a real life serial killer, but it matters. Like this is yeah, actually uncomfortable. This is actually disturbing. Yeah. And no matter what anyone says, the media you grow up on influences you. Right. It just does. It just does. That's why you have favorite things. That's why you right. have favorite types of music, you know, cuz it does influence you. And and you're and I'm not saying that all media creates serial killers and that's how it happens of course it's way more complicated than that mm -hmm. but it matters you know it matter it frames mm -hmm. what people think and what people feel and what people believe that's the, so yeah of course it matters that's the fucking thing it matters both less and more than this game is telling me it does <laughs> it like yeah again it's not i don't think video games are going to make a person violent but I think they are going to right. have an impact on a person. I don't think a video are, game yes. is going to make somebody a uh, perverted sex addict. But I think it is going to have an impact on how they view sex. Um, right. If Or how or, or media can impact how you view women or how you right. view yourself. You know, I, I, I this is really well known and documented, but I had an eating disorder for a very long time. And it is a product of my environment. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a mom that was dieting very consistently. Um, one of my Barbie toys came with a scale that you could put her on, and it always weighed 110 pounds. Holy shit. It was yeah. Yeah, it was rough out there. Uh, I mean, like, like in, the, the early 90s were tough. I knew it was bad, but I didn't know they gave you a scale with, like, a yeah, solid, scale. like, a printed weight on it. Barbie. Yeah, and the, the and the weight was always 110 Holy. and I you know I was overweight growing up so I was also not fitting people's uh, what they wanted also, of me very unpopular bullied so yeah those things 
do impact people. In order I would for say Barbie that to be that, he impacted me directly. In order for Barbie to be that tall with that large of boobs, <laughs> that's impossible. How could she possibly weigh a hundred and ten pounds? It makes no sense. But a little little yeah. me was like, oh okay. Oh, of course. Yeah. Everybody should be a hundred and ten pounds, including five foot eight now five foot eight Sarah. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like. Um, which makes no sense for me. Barbie, so, Barbie, yeah, of course it affects. Barbie toys, like in their in their proportions, seem like they're probably like six feet tall, <laughs> right? Like they're like Amazonian yeah, women they're, almost. They, they cl- gotta they're look at them that way. Clearly tall people. Yeah, they're clearly tall with giant boobs. Like that's so ridiculous. Sorry, I'm getting hung <laughs> up on this, but a hundred and ten pounds. <laughs> I'm surprised I haven't told you this before because it was, it's like comical, right? But at the time, it was definitely a catalyst. It, yeah, it, I yeah. felt it. You know, I, I was already upset with how I was being treated by other kids. So it's just another thing. You know what I mean? It's just yeah. another thing that corporations and media is, t- is telling me is correct. Right. Is telling me this is the right way yeah. to look. And not everyone's going to be affected like that. And that, that's fine. Um. But there is enough, I think I can say this pretty confidently, especially in, in young girls and those who have had eating disorders, there's enough of a pattern, right. right? There's enough of a pattern where this is happening to young girls and and boys too. Uh, it is mostly women, I will say that. It's not, it doesn't, it doesn't, um, you know, differentiate gender, but it is mostly little girls and there's a pattern right. so we can at least go by that research and those just you know statistics and say okay well something is affecting them you know i i remember this is reminding me of i remember a friend who had uh who when she was young she asked her mom if she'd have big boobs when she grew up and her mom was mm. like well I don't, and your grandmother doesn't, so it's unlikely that you will. And she said she remembers, like, crying <laughs> in her room yeah. and her mom having to comfort her for, like, the rest of the night. And oh, that she no. was, like, she was, like, a child. Like, she was, like, under 10, right? Like, she was, like, yeah. a little girl crying that she wasn't going to have giant boots. And, like, yeah. The, what, what do we do to little girls? What the hell? <laughs> yeah, the pressure, the pressure is enormous, and that's why I'm so candid about it. Yeah, and willing, you know, willing to discuss. Yeah, yeah, our environment, our media that we consume. Absolutely, if you're susceptible to it, which I was, yes. Mm-hmm. And again, there's, it's not, you know, it doesn't exist as an isolated case. Clearly, yeah. I'm not the only one with this exact story, right? Right. You know, so it's enough that we need to. Be conscious about what we put out there, you know? Right. And I don't think that's asking a lot. I don't think being conscious of what we put out there is is asking a lot at all, but some people think seem to think it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, some people freak out when you put a black person in a movie. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. It's not realistic, guys. Yeah. It's my best. Uh, yeah. <laughs> It's my best will actually. I was there. <laughs> I was there. I was there and oh I didn't see God. a black person. <laughs> like. Yeah. Yeah, for a while we were kind of in this uh in this sentiment of like, well it didn't happen to me, so yeah. it didn't happen to you either. I'm like, yeah. what? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I think uh <laughs> That's Harvester. <laughs> that's Harvester. There you go, guys. That's the video game Harvester. We've only talked about the video game Harvester. <laughs> if, if you think we lost track of what we were talking about, we didn't. That was Harvester. That was Harvester, yeah. <laughs> Everything was Harvester. <laughs> okay. Um I I need I just need a palate cleanser real quick. Let's uh before we say goodbye, let's uh let's do one more quick spanky pack Dorinos. Okay, I can do that. Okay. It's my favorite game. <laughs> It's Matt's favorite game. It's not my, my favorite, favorite game. game. It's my favorite game. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Hey, Roses. Hi. I'm Matt still. 
Um, I'm your friend, Matt. <laughs> I hope so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you didn't change genres on me <laughs> no. while, during the break, did I'm, you? I'm, v- I'm vigorously stabbing over here. There's no one to stab. <laughs> I'm just doing it. God. I'm really good at stabbing, too. So if people, Oh, good to know. So good to know, Matt. Better people... It's because you played Harvester, right? People better hope they don't wander <laughs> into this place. <laughs> <laughs> I, and also, I just do it with my hands. They're just... they. Oh, are, you, see, you don't have a knife or anything. You're just... They are so... Making the motion. No, they're they're like... Uh, they're like honed steel, these hands. Okay. You know, I met you in person, right? Yeah, and what did you think of my honed steel hands? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no comment. Y'all are just going to have to meet Matt in real life and make your own judgments. Well, everybody, thank you for listening. This has been an interesting one. I, I think, I did you have fun? Did you have fun chatting I about? Did. Okay, yeah. I had fun. Yeah, I, did. I always have fun Some of diving. the subject matter maybe was a little, a bit of a bummer. But um, again, I just do want to say, as we wrap up here, I like the game Harvester. I don't yeah, know I do, I do too. if I could entirely explain to anybody why, but I like it, and I will yeah. probably play it again at some point in my life. Yeah, same. I, I'm kind of on the same page. I do. Obviously, I think we've done a really good job explaining our issues with it, mm-hmm. but that I, I'm going to say I don't like the third half. That's not why I want to play an adventure Oh, yeah. Game. The, so yeah. I, can't, I can't stand by the flip in video game genre, but the adventure game parts of it, yeah, I did enjoy it yeah. in a in a morbid way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, all right, everybody. Uh, we are part of the Adventure Game Hotspot Network. Uh, go check them out, adventuregamehotspot.com, where I will uh, sometime very soon have a review, a written review ah. of Duck Detective going yes. out. So um, if, you want, if you want a little bit more detail about how I feel about that game, check that out. Um, what also, a- write reviews for us. <laughs> I did it. Good job. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And that's, that's really going to get him out there. Um, it's Yeah. It's totally going to work. Write reviews. But yeah, in all seriousness, uh, apparently reviews are important. I learned this last week, I guess, <laughs> when Matt was trying to explain it to me. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's, it's dumb <laughs> algorithm stuff. Look, I, I don't. It's not that I think they should be important. Um, yeah. And but it's they not, just are. It's not that my ego is so fragile. I need to see that number go up. It's just, it's literally just about uh, fucking algorithms. Um, yeah, it's the same on YouTube, honestly. Like, the more comments and engagement you get, mm-hmm. the more reach th- your stuff will have. And also, we, we got a bullshit one star review. We're not, I'm not going to talk about it uh, besides the fact that. It it's not from a listener, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think so. If no. it is, if you Absolutely. are a listener and you did is. give us a one star review because you absolutely hate us, and uh, instead of just turning it off, you were like, then write us, and uh, I'd be interested to know, and then I'll stop blaming it on uh, some jerk. <laughs> but uh, um, but yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, or you can you can write me and you can let me know what can I do to make it right. <laughs> What, what what can I do? No, I'm just gonna, <laughs> to no. make you the VIP. Nah, no, not. yeah, I don't fucking care. <laughs> I'm gonna, we're we're gonna make the show we want to make. <laughs> ah, damn. Um, uh, but email us mattroses at gmail dot com if you just wanna if you have a question, uh, keep it short. Uh, try and think of an interesting question that would be fun to listen to an answer to rather than just like, yeah. what's your favorite adventure game again? <laughs> It's Grim Fandango. <laughs> Just so I don't get that question this week. It's, it is it is Grim Fandango. <laughs> and uh, remember, next week we will be talking about uh, Nightmare Frames and... Possess Glasses! <laughs> <laughs> and an English haunting. <laughs> so uh, if you want to keep up with us, play those games real, real, real quick. And uh, yeah. uh, that leaves only one thing left to say, and I just I just can't think of what it would be. Get plenty of water and foliage in your diet? Yeah. Uh, I get. I, <laughs> like, yeah, I, I, just, I, get, I just shock you with my I get, my new I motto? Guess, I guess that's it. Okay, bye, everybody. Matt, no. What? It, it's, of course, podcast is art. And artists suffer.